Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Winning. And I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. Today, Paul, we're talking about two things that are really interesting. I can't remember the first time I ever heard of this, but someone introduced it to me, and, and it was a way to help you shop for produce that was less contaminated with pesticides. I love it. Before we go, <laughs> okay. I just want to give a warning. A warning label? Yes, warning label. There's a chance that Dr. Weening may crack a joke during this video. <gasps> if you are joke oh, yes. averse. Sure. If that triggers you. <laughs> we don't want to offend you. No. Because sometimes we get comments from people who say, yeah, we don't like the jokes. Or one person even said, oh, the answer's at 2 minutes and 23 seconds. Yeah, the just get to fluff. it. Just get to it. Jokes, fluff, <laughs> all that stuff all over this video yeah, and just about every video we make. That's right. And another thing is, we're not selling anything, we've nothing to gain here. So all the people that write really negative comments about, oh, why do you say this, why do you say that? We're just presenting evidence for you to make a choice. So if you have humorous absentia, which sounds like a Harry Potter curse <laughs> now that I say it. Yeah, it does. Wingardium Leviosa, <laughs> humorous absentia, it's a medical diagnosis that I just made up. Yeah. If you don't like hearing lighthearted discussions about medical topics, please go to another channel. We do enjoy the comments, so every comment that you leave, positive and negative, we do appreciate them. Thank you. I'm not saying upset that you said comments, but for your benefit and to make you not unhappy. Yes, not unhappy. Heads up. Okay, so there's a group called the Environmental Working Group. They have a website. They do. Uh, research into negative uh, impacts on our environment from chemicals primarily. Thank but, you. Yeah, they're an amazing group of uh, a group of scientists, lawyers, policymakers, uh, data communications people, and their mission. I'm going to read their mission because I thought, hey, they, we really kind of align with these people because this right. is our goal. So their mission, it says here on their website, our mission is simple: to empower you with breakthrough research to make informed choices and live a healthy life in a healthy environment. That's what that, we do. That's what I said. I said, hey, that's, that's what copied we do. us. That's what we do. So today we're talking about something that they call their dirty dozen. So they do a lot of research into produce and how pesticides that are used in order to grow our food affect us when we consume it. So I think we would all recognize that, that some type of um, chemical treatment of the food and the soil is necessary and understandable to improve yields and to allow us to provide enough food for the entire world. This is a huge issue and that's why there's a constant battle between scientists and farmers and policymakers to say, where's that balance of safety which being able to produce enough food so that everybody can eat? Yeah, so you don't get your fruit at home after a bug's already eaten it. That's right. But on the other hand, you don't want to eat a bunch of pesticides. Right, so these are their top 12 and every year they do this and the, the list changes subtly year to year of the top 12 foods that seem to accumulate uh, pesticides and this is regardless of whether you get them home and wash them or peel them so it, these are, are more dangerous doesn't mean you can't eat them but it means that if you can find an organic source of them typically this is going to be better dirty dozen the Sounds dirty like dozen a, it's John kinda, Wayne Western, I know it, right? it's kind of cool so we're gonna we're gonna list the 12 All right, and we're gonna it. go from there okay so you start okay number one is strawberries delicious um, healthy uh, fruit choice but they unfortunately accumulate a lot of pesticides okay Number two yep. is spinach, one of the dirty dozen. I love spinach, and spinach actually has been shown to have up to 1.8 times more pesticide than other, other fruits and vegetables by weight, so it really seems to accumulate it. Sorry, Popeye. Number three makes me sad. Number three is kale and collard greens. <laughs> kale, I've got you. Yeah. Kale, finally. So, that cardboard vegetable yeah, takes so, a hit. So kale, even a single sample is shown to have up to like 21 different pesticides on a single sample. That's a lot of pesticides. I know, it made me very sad. So, Sorry, kale. The good news for me is that we grow a lot of our own kale, so I don't put any pesticides on our on our fruits. Okay. Vegetables. Okay, number four. Nectarines. Nectarines, delicious. Love them. They accumulate. Apples, same thing. And we don't know exactly the details. I'm sure they go into deep detail exactly why, but a combination of what types of pesticides are, are sprayed as well as the nature of their peel or the way they absorb nutrients from the environment. An apple it keeps the doctor away, yeah. but doesn't keep the toxicologist at bay. That's yeah. what I always say. <laughs> Yeah, so again, these are, these are foods you should try to get organically if you can, and obviously we realize that's not always practical for everyone. Okay. My, I love the next one, grapes. I know. I love and, grapes. And they have a lot of healthy things, particularly in the skin. Reservatrol has been shown to reduce inflammation, have many health benefits, but yes, they tend to accumulate the pesticides. I'm going to start peeling my grapes. Number seven is bell and hot peppers. So any types of peppers, and these peppers, when they looked at them, 
they had up to 100 different pesticides. So I think it's because peppers are actually hard to grow and we grew them in our garden this year and they are a little fussy with the temperature and the bug. So maybe they require more pesticides in order to have a good yield, but this is at, at a price, so. They're so good that the bugs love them too. Yeah, we didn't. Um, next one is cherries. Yeah, I love doesn't cherries. Love, yeah, dark, wonderful right? cherry, for sure. Cherry Coke, I mean, I love cherry Coke. I don't think, that probably does, that may have pesticides. <laughs> Who even knows? Who even knows? Cherry. Okay, number nine is peaches short little season and and obviously a delicate little fruit right i mean mm -hmm. it gets for soft very quickly so uh yeah number nine is peaches and then the next one is pears bugs yep. love pears so pears get pesticides okay number 11 is celery celery actually has almost no calories lots yeah. of fiber um i grew celery we grew celery in our garden for the first yep. time with some success again didn't use any pesticides but i think again it's obviously vulnerable to bugs and disease so more pesticides were used on celery and the last one running it out Tomatoes. Yeah, tomatoes. And I think, again, because of the nature of their thin skin and the way that they grow, that's our list. So there is your dirty tomatoes. dozen. Tomatoes. You put them in the salad all the time. I know. With your, with your spinach and your kale. Like, and now yeah. your salad dressing is deep. Yeah. Yeah. So be careful. Proceed with caution. Actually, their website actually has a printable list that you can actually take when you yeah. grocery shopping. What are they shopping. called again? The Dirty Dozen. The Dirty Dozen. And the group is the environmental working group so ewr.org is their is their website and a lot of interesting information about things like sunscreen water pollutants soil contaminants yeah, you could kill um, a whole weekend on this website <laughs> hey i noticed that uh, chicken wings were not on the dirty dozen list so th they weren't but really it's it was uh, like a fruit and vegetable list so it's not a fruit or vegetable, but you're right. I'm not, not saying. Uh, <laughs> not, I'm just saying. You're right. It's not. They there. weren't on. There. Irregardless. <laughs> irregardless. Irregardless. Chicken wings were not on the dirty dozen list. Fair enough. I don't like the word irregardless. <laughs> so if you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to our channel. Share this list with someone that goes shopping and says, "Listen, I'm going to go buy all sorts of fruits and vegetables, and weren't sure if organic was worth it." I think this might be a. Does situation organic where... really mean there's no pesticide? So there's a certain limit to what uh, requires the certification of organic. So it makes it better, but yeah, I think obviously run off in the soil and it just means you haven't sprayed stuff but we've yeah. talked about this so unless you're maybe on an island that doesn't get rain that has like sulfur and other contaminants in it and has never been exposed to it, it'd be hard to be 100 percent pesticide free now in our world because we've we've ruined it so much yeah but yeah so gilligan in, you're in, in luck in general organic is is better so all right there you have it so like share subscribe and remember, you may not be in charge of the pesticides you ingest, but you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.